Now we're going to be taking a look at uh, the ecosystem material types uh, that are available and uh, how we can control ecosystems uh, using uh, just the features found uh, primarily just within the material editor. Uh, and then later we'll be taking a look at controlling uh, specific functions. What I'm going to do is select uh, this landscape object I have. And uh, uh, first I'm going to be going into the options. Uh, so we go to the carbon scatter options. We're going to find uh, a couple of different things that are going to be uh, helpful. Um, for now, I'm going to be setting my uh, ecosystem instance preview to 5,000 and set my default quality to billboards. Uh, this way, we don't have to uh, take each individual instance that's added uh, in each object and set the quality. Uh, if we set it up ahead of time in here, we can go to billboards. Uh, default quality. Uh, we can change whether or not we want to use uh, low quality or high quality uh, models of the CS plants and then how many uh, variations uh, there are going to be of each of those plants. Uh, now this is a number that's going to uh, affect everything uh, so it's a good idea just to start with one species to begin with or one uh, variation and then you can change that later and it'll basically uh, add the additional uh, objects uh, later or uh, after uh, the population is created. Uh, for now I'm going to leave it at 1 and uh, the default quality I, I'm just going to leave it high for now and click OK. Uh, so let's go ahead and select the populate objects command uh, and it's going to open up uh, the material editor and uh, of course, we can add in anything we want to have in our list. Uh, we can also load in uh, presets and different materials, uh, ecosystem layers to load in. So if you go to the lower right, you can select load. Uh, and I don't really have anything um, in my collection uh, except uh, custom materials that I've created. Um, actually, to be honest, I'm not sure if uh, Carbon Scatter comes with uh, preset ecosystems, although you can save out. Um, your materials and you should be able to do that no problem with the CS plants. Um, native objects in the population uh, saving materials will only work uh, within the same scene that those objects were originally created in or populations were created in. Uh, so for loading in uh, the presets it looks like there's really uh, only presets for uh, the individual channels uh, and their controls. And we'll take a look at those in a minute. So let's go ahead and add in a couple of plants. Uh, I'm going to use some of the lower res um, species to begin with. And basically, your uh, the first row uh, and row size does change depending on the size of your preview. Um, but up until uh, you get into uh, the white oak tree uh, is basically all of the lower res uh, models that have smaller polygon counts. Uh, even some of these ones uh, towards the end can have slightly higher amounts, but the, the first set that we see here is really uh, the lower res objects uh, where you have in this case, maple tree, 20 to 80,000 polygons, as opposed to some of the other plants, which are uh, 320,000 to 450,000 polygons, uh, really depending on the species variation. Uh, so I'm going to add in uh, just some basic objects in maple tree, add another plant, we'll add a plum tree, and then I'll also add in a cherry tree. And in order to keep scales correct, I'm going to go ahead and change these down to 0.1 because I'm using a document scale of 1 meter. Uh, so the first thing we see next to our scale is the presence. Uh, present setting is basically um, how many of these objects uh, do we want to have uh, spread throughout. Uh, so this is kind of a ratio. Uh, for the most part. So if I was to take any of these numbers, and let's go ahead and take the plum tree and set that to 2, I'm now going to have twice as many uh, plum trees uh, as I would have had originally it set to 1. 
I'll go ahead and populate. And the plum trees are going to be very small. Uh, they're the very small instances that are showing. Uh, the plum tree itself is a fairly small plant. Uh, so we could increase uh, the, the number of that to 10. And now we're going to see a lot more uh, plum tree showing. So we can go through and modify the presence of each individual uh, instance. We could even reduce. Uh, so now if I cut the maple tree down to 0.5, uh, that's going to modify its distribution. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind uh, is the density. Uh, right now, I've got the density set to uh, just the default, and it's creating 17,500 instances. Well, uh, with the way my options are set up, it's only going to show 5,000 of these. So there are a lot more um, instances than we can really see. And uh, kind of controlling and setting up uh, the previews for that can be difficult to really tell um, how many instances you have unless you render. Uh, an easy method would be to use the box preview mode. I'm going to go to my options and just, as long as I'm not moving the camera around too much, I can bring it up to 10,000. Should be a little easier to see uh, what's going on. Uh, so going back to the population list, uh, I'm going to reduce my density. Now let's go ahead and use nine percent. So now what we're seeing is actually what we're going to get because my uh, preview mode is up to uh, ten thousand. Uh, if we take a look at the option um, just underneath the variable density, what we have is a slope influence. Uh, increasing this up to 100% and populating, it's, it's going to basically reduce uh, the instances along steeper slopes. Uh, it's different than what we would see in the present setting, which is going to be our slope constraint, allowing us to define which angle um, we're populating on, and is going to detect the geometry at what angle it, uh, it is currently at, and the direction of the normal. Uh, the slope influence is useful because uh, ecosystem populations are a downward projection, uh, which also means that you can only populate uh, up to 90 degrees uh, slope. So even though the presence, uh, we take a look, we see 0 to 180 degrees, which is going to be, uh, basically if we were to take a look at a circle, it would be uh, just going along one side of it down to 90 and then from 90 to 180 for the bottom of it. We can't populate below that, but those options are there because you can restrict the um, ecosystem painter, uh, the CS painter, uh, to paint at only those lower uh, slope ranges. So it's not useful for population in itself uh, going above 90 degrees, but for the painting it is. Uh, so the slope influence basically uh, just prevents a lot of instances from being created uh, once you are nearing a steeper slope. Because uh, basically if you were to look at it as uh, sort of a polygonal um, density in comparison to height, uh, we would have uh, those denser areas reaching uh, around the way the slopes are set up. Uh, so if we move on, uh, just taking a look, uh, scaling orientation, overall scaling uh, is just going to scale everything uh, within the population list. So if we wanted to bring that up to two, it's going to scale everything uh, and double the size of everything. So we could also reduce that way as well. The maximum size variation um, is directly controlled uh, by the keep proportions. If it is set to 100% for the keep proportions, which makes it uniform, then you have one scale that's open, which shows as X, but really it's just an overall scale. Um, and the maximum amount of variation, if we set it to zero, there's going to be no scale variation whatsoever. They'll all be identical. Setting it to one changes that scale variation um, to go up and scale them up one. Uh, and also 
in some cases scale them down a little bit more. Uh, so if I bring this number up to 6 and populate, we're going to see a lot more scale variation. And the variation itself, um, by default, is controlled just by an internal noise. Uh, same thing with the density. Uh, just It's all just kind of an internal variation. Uh, until we start using uh, variable uh, scaling, variable density, and setting up functions uh, to control specifically where larger uh, elements are going to appear in smaller elements. Uh, so now if we wanted to uh, distort these, uh, make them non-uniform, we can change this uh, key proportion slider um, and depending on the extent of uh, how uniform you want them, how non-uniform, uh, you can control that slider all the way down to zero. So now our size variation, if I populate x, um, it's going to stretch them out on the x-axis uh, up to 6, and then uh, for the y and z, uh, they're going to remain uh, at 1. Uh, now one thing you should know about uh, carbon scatter is that the z-axis is the up and down axis. So if we set this to 1 all the way across, uh, we'll see variations, but let's go ahead and bring in z up to 6, and now we're going to see them stretched up and down uh, a lot more. Uh, so within every part of the function, uh, function scales, and also once you're within uh, the function editor, uh, x is equal to the same uh, as it is within uh, Cinema 40. Uh, z and y are flipped. So z is the up axis, which puts uh, what we'd normally see y at within uh, Cinema in the z position. Uh, so I'm going to bring this back to the uniform and set my maximum size to 0.618. And uh, if we take a look at the direction from surface, uh, this is going to be the direction uh, the instance is laying uh, in relation to the normal that it's being populated on. Uh, so right now it's a default 20%. We can bring it up to perpendicular and then we're going to see the uh, instances lean on the sides of slopes so you can see them conforming uh, or we can make them straight up and down regardless of uh, the normal direction uh, under the rotation of course we have uh, two different types of rotation uh, and then the ability to control maximum rotation up to 180 um, you can also key in a higher value uh, up to 360 or even higher. Keep in mind that after you close um, the material editor, uh, that those values that are typed in over max uh, might be uh, removed and set to the higher value. Um, but keep in mind that if you did set it to in this case 720, and then closed it out, open it, it says 180, that 720 should still apply uh, to the population. Uh, so the additional rotation method is instead of just uh, the up and down axis, so basically rotating um, around the Z uh, would be to just rotate every axis, and we can flip them all around. So we set it to 360, we can have them rotate around uh, up to 360 degrees, 180 is the max, typically. Or we could just set it to a smaller amount. Uh, if you're going to go for realism, uh, 6 to 12 is going to be really the ranges you would want to work with um, to really make sure that it doesn't get knocked over. Unless you want trees to be knocked over, then you can really go up a bit higher. Uh, but that's going to depend on the species, and you really want to prevent stuff from going uh, within uh, objects. But, of course, that does depend on uh, the design, what you're really looking for. Uh, so if you're just looking for a, a basic forest that would have a bit of uh, all axial, all axi rotation, uh, I typically work between uh, really th 3 and 12 or 6 and 12, and try not to go beyond that. 
if I was to add maybe dead trees that I would want knocked over, then I would control that with a different layer entirely. Uh, so just really quick, the last control, uh, shrink at low densities is going to take um, any instance that falls within a lower amount of density, and that is in relation to the overall density. So right now there's really no change when I turn this on. If we increase the influence, and it still doesn't look like there's much of a change, and that's because the density is only set to 9%. I'll go ahead and increase that. Uh, so we'll take a look at that shrink at low density a little bit later uh, once we have a more complex uh, ecosystem set up. Because right now, um, this is a larger object, so it will take very high populations in order to be able to uh, fill it. And uh, won't really be able to see that within the preview. Okay, uh, so what I want to show you now uh, is we're gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and bring down that overall density uh, so that we have some display or preview instances freed up and I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer and we're gonna take a look at layers first uh, and what we can do is just click uh, just above this trash can which will remove a layer uh, to add a layer and now we've got a new one added, and we go to uh, the General tab. We're going to find some new options, which are Affinity with Layer and the Repulsion from Layer. I'm going to add in a uh, new plant. We'll use a uh, yellow maple tree. And just set our population down a little lower. Change that scale to 0.1. Uh, so these two controls... Uh, we'll use the information uh, and the population from the previous layer, the layer that's underneath it, uh, in order to control where the population shows um, for the current layer. So if we increase the infinity with layer, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to have uh, the instances populating near uh, the objects of the previous layer. Let's go ahead and scale this down a little further. Uh, so we can show them uh, getting a lot closer, and we can also reverse it. Now the difference between uh, the repulsion and the affinity is the falloff. Uh, both of them will essentially do the same thing. Uh, so a negative repulsion will act like a positive affinity, but uh, what's different is the way um, the instances uh, basically fall off or are populated um, on the outside. Uh, so instead of a smooth fall off, uh, repulsion has um, a harsh fall off, which is basically either it has an instance or it doesn't uh, within that calculated area, whereas the affinity it's going to populate with a bit of fall off and have a few instances here and there. Uh, so a whole bunch closer to the other objects and then less as it starts to fade out. Uh, so you can get similar effects with them, but the primary difference is the fall off uh, between the two. Uh, so now we can add uh, an additional layer, add uh, a few more plants, and let's add some smaller plants. Um, we'll add the car X and the Aurelia, increase the affinity and populate. Of course, we do need to change scale, uh, which is obviously going to also create a lot more of them because the plants are going to be much smaller uh, than any of the trees. And I basically removed my preview uh, because there's so many of them. So we'll decrease density. Uh, if we're going to do that, might even have to go a bit further. Uh, so what I ended up typing in was 0.5% for the density. Uh, and now we can see uh, 
a little more of those with still having the um, original uh, instances from the prior layers. Uh, so that will continue to work, uh, the affinity and repulsion, as you include and add more and more layers. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and delete uh, these other two layers. So we're just back to our original layer. Uh, and we're going to move on and take a look at uh, the present settings. Um, most of the stuff's pretty straightforward. Uh, what we have uh, is the ability to control based on altitude, slope constraint, and uh, orientation. So uh, altitude range um, has a couple of different modes. Um, by object and by material are going to be basically the same. Um, uh, the, the controls there, uh, at least the by material mode, is really more of a remnant from uh, view uh, since the function editor or, or the even the material editor uh, and all this was really brought over from view uh, for carbon scatter. Um, the by material mode would be, work for multiple objects that have the same material uh, but with carbon scatter that's kind of varied. Uh, within view that's used to have if you have multiple objects selected that you're populating with an identical material um, with the same ecosystem material but that's uh, a little harder to control within uh, carbon scatter uh, so typically you'll be working with the by object and the absolute modes now one thing you should know about the absolute mode is if I go ahead and switch the absolute mode uh, what we're gonna see is uh, that the lowest point of altitude range uh, is going to be equal to the object axis. So instead of um, the bottommost point being the bottom of the object, it is going to rely on, in this case, what would be the center of the actual object um, in its full length, even though the terrain doesn't stretch all the way to the top. Uh, it is centered because that's the way uh, or where the object axis is within all native objects uh, within uh, Cinema 4D. And until this object is uh, made editable or baked to polygons, um, the object axis cannot be changed. Another thing to uh, keep in mind is that the altitude range is going to reset itself. So I typed in negative 50 meters and it does auto uh, correct back to the center. Uh, so this can be useful if you have the ability to set the object axis if it's a non or a, an edited object that is polygonal um, but if you're using just uh, a standard what would be I guess a kind of a Cinema 4D primitive uh, then you're really gonna have to use the by object mode uh, in order to control that altitude uh, within at least the presence tab. Uh, it's not going to impact functions. Uh, although it will uh, it may modify the numeric entries required to meet um, negative values to equal zero, but uh, within the function editor it's not going to autocorrect anything. Now these can't be driven with the function directly, but uh, if we want to control what would be basically the density, uh, we can connect that to the altitude in, or a, yeah the altitude input within the function editor. And we'll take a look at that once we start covering the function editor and really taking a look at it. Uh, so if we see the altitude range. Um, obviously, it's a uh, pretty easy to control. We can just adjust our slope range or our altitude range um, with the slider. Uh, the fuzziness is basically the fall off. Uh, so right now, uh, if I modify the top, it's going to take the topmost point uh, of those peaks and start to fall off from that. Not as visible because we are going all the way up to one. Uh, so in this case, where our bottom cuts off, let's increase the fuzziness and we're going to see it start to fall off. Uh, and it's a, a centered fall off uh, for the most part. Uh, it'll mostly go downward. Uh, from, from the altitude range point, uh, but it's somewhat centered uh, in the way that it does fall off, because we can also see the uh, higher instances uh, starting to 
be modified. So let's go ahead and change it so that we're populating more towards the bottom. And then uh, we can take a look at slope ranges. Uh, as I was saying before, our slope range goes to 0 to 180. If I change this to 90, populate, we're not going to see a change because we cannot populate anything um, over 90. Uh, just because all populations are downward. If we wanted to paint on a steeper slope or anything going below 90 to 180, then uh, it's possible. Uh, so slope range, go to 22 degrees. So now we'll only populate up to a slope of 22 degrees. And that's, of course, based on uh, the geometry of the model, where it's going to calculate that slope range. Go to 45. And now we have uh, most of those really steep slopes uh, being ignored. Now if we only want to populate on the steeper slopes, uh, we can take the upper range and start to bring that down. Uh, so that's a cool way to be able to cover steep slopes with uh, certain objects. Uh, fuzziness works the same way, um, where we can have uh, the fall off on the steep areas. And we're not really seeing a change, and that's probably because my population amount. I'm going to go ahead and increase the slope range all the way, and the altitude, and then modify that steepness value and see if I can get a change. I'm not really changing too much. Uh, if we do do the fuzziness for the flat amount, it will start to fall off uh, the flatter ranged areas. Uh, basically, we just don't have the density high enough. Um, in order to really see the uh, steep fuzziness. And a lot of that will have to do uh, with the transition as well. Uh, so if we limit it uh, to just the flatter regions uh, and now start to increase uh, the fuzziness amount, it will start to uh, adjust that fall off onto uh, steeper slopes from the flatter areas. Okay, so now if we take a look uh, at uh, the orientation, we'll move up and look at this from above, uh, what we have is a preferred orientation amount. Uh, changing that is not going to do anything until we adjust our tightness. Uh, we can, of course, use the fuzziness, which will start to uh, change from that orientation. But the tightness amount and the percentage uh, is going to be really important. So we can adjust uh, our degree and the normal direction uh, that we're going to be uh, populating onto. So the normals have to be facing a certain direction, in this case, 80 degrees. Uh, it will also affect uh, not just the normals, but it uh, will take into account the uh, steeper slope areas, but also uh, once we reach a certain point on the side uh, of an object, it will start going down more uh, really independently of the normal direction. Uh, so it's kind of a combination of uh, sort of a radial uh, function along with uh, normal direction. And then we can adjust the fall off with the fuzziness. Uh, so these options can pretty much all be controlled uh, with functions as well, uh, which we'll take a look at later. Um, but these direct controls are really useful. Uh, none of them can be extracted uh, and controlled directly by functions, but you can control other things like density with uh, the altitude slope and orientation options and inputs within uh, the function editor. Okay, so now we're going to look at the last uh, material type, which is a mixed material. And uh, what I want to do first is restrict this uh, ecosystem to uh, flatter regions. Let's go ahead and bring it to 
or 35 degrees. Uh, so 0 to 35 degrees is what it's going to populate on. We'll go ahead and switch this over to a mixed material. Uh, now we need to edit our uh, material too. So we can right click and go to edit. And we can see the, the list of the two different materials. Uh, so even though it looks like a layer, uh, what we have is a mixed material that's uh, collapsible. And uh, Then we can select the individual materials. I'm going to add a plant, uh, go to trees, and let's use the red and yellow maples just because they will stand out a lot more. Go ahead and change the scale to 0.1. And then uh, we're going to set this to populate more on uh, steeper slopes change our density uh, so now we have one material on uh, flatter surfaces one on steeper slopes and uh, I can increase my quality boost in order to uh, try to conform more to uh, those values uh, quality boost for the placement it's going to affect more um, when you're controlling with a function anything includes images uh, and also variable uh, densities, things like that, uh, within the internal function. So how we control uh, the distribution of materials 1 and 2, uh, is, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, we can use the influence of environment, uh, which is going to give us options for altitude, slope, and orientation um, to mix the materials. So we have material uh, 2, and if we go ahead and look at materials to mix, we can see uh, we've got the original material and the one with the red and yellow maples. Uh, red and yellow is the material 2. So material 2, let's make uh, appearing at high altitudes, and then we can adjust how strongly uh, it's going to conform to that. And then uh, influence of slope, whether or not it appears on flat surfaces or steep surfaces. And these are going to work independently of the controls that we have set up for the individual uh, presence. Uh, so then also we can adjust the influence of orientation. And then uh, material to appearing near the azimuth, uh, which is going to give us our degree amount. Uh, so this can also be based on a world orientation uh, or object orientation. So if you do have the object rotated, uh, it can also take that into account. Uh, altitude range right now is set up by material. You can also set it by object, and we're not going to see much difference. Uh, what we also have the ability to do is control the overall mixing propor proportions up at the top, uh, either leaning towards one material or the other. Uh, so beyond this distribution, uh, and if we take a look, there are a couple of different ways we can adjust the blending with the smooth blending strip, uh, which is basically the fall off. Uh, these other options, uh, full blend, cubic blend, uh, li linear, and the cover aren't really going to make a difference because that's more for actual materials, um, view materials. And uh, we're working with ecosystems here. So like I said, some of this stuff is left over um, from view. The controls have been carried over, um, probably just to keep things more stable, because once you start removing features, uh, probably run into some bugs and whatnot, which is more than likely why some of the stuff is left over. Uh, other ways we can distribute the material, besides using these controls in the influence of environment, uh, is to control it with a function. Uh, and what we have is a distribution function. Uh, what I can do is double click, and that's going to open up uh, different functions that we can use to control uh, one material or the other. Uh, so basically, if we were to take a look at this, and uh, we'll select, uh, actually, we'll use chipped. And if we see in the preview, it looks like the preview disappeared. I'm going to edit it and see if we can get that. Uh, okay, so even though it's not really showing up all that well uh, within that preview, once I go ahead and open the function, we can see 
that the information is there. I'm not sure why the preview didn't show up though. Uh, so basically what we have is white is going to be uh, one material, uh, material two, and black is going to be material one. Uh, and it's going to go between a range of negative one to one. One being white, material two, and negative one being black, material one. Now we can populate, so we can control this entirely with uh, this distribution material. We can change the scale um, outside of the function itself. And then uh, the unit system that's used is controlled by the uh, mapping mode of the mixed material. Even though uh, we could have independent mapping modes, uh, as you can see the red and yellow maple, that is a world standard mapping mode. Uh, if we take a look at the default material, uh, this is the mixed material, the one on top, we can also change the mapping mode of this one, and it will not change, um, or at least it shouldn't change, uh, the individual materials uh, themselves. Uh, what is going to change is the way we control this distribution. Uh, so just this distribution function is the only thing going to change if we modify uh, the mapping mode. Uh, so we are just seeing the distribution based on those coordinates changing. So you could uh, create your own functions or load in different distributions that way. So that is the main way to control uh, mixed material. Uh, mixed materials themselves can contain uh, materials with multiple layers. So we could add another layer to material one. So now we have that original uh, ecosystem layer and now we could add another layer with some fir trees, add the affinity with the other layer. And now it's going to mix a layered material with uh, just a single layer. So you can add multiple layers within that. Uh, and then, of course, adjust. Uh, the smooth blending strip is going to uh, basically be like a contrast amount for this distribution uh, function. So you could smooth it out, uh, get the full range, uh, or you can start to clip it more uh, for a harsher cutoff. Uh, so lowering it is going to increase basically the contrast output of the distribution function. Uh, there are also a couple of other options with the material editor that are pretty useful. And uh, what we have the ability to do is store or create a snapshot of the material. Uh, and there's two different storage containers. Uh, so if you make modifications um, and decide you want to go back, you can double click and it'll reload um, that material setup. So that's kind of cool. Uh, doesn't hold a whole lot, but it is a nice way to make just a few changes and then go back quickly. Uh, as far as undo operations uh, within Carbon Scatter, uh, th you really won't be able to undo much, <laughs> or at least have it uh, be reliable. Um, I typically just stay away from undo if possible, because uh, I know there are a few issues with it. Uh, whether or not it's going to undo within Cinema or within Carbon Scatter, I have noticed undo operations will sometimes just remove ecosystems entirely and caused a little bit of instability. Um, uh, not always, and hopefully that changes in the future. Uh, another option, um, and what we'll see, uh, we'll just take a look at a quick render first to show this option. Okay, so here's the current ecosystem. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is go to uh, back to the populate objects command and we're going to use the highlighter uh, to change the material and that is this little highlighter right on the side of the material and we can change that right click to change the color uh, and actually it looks like that's not working uh, what that is when you're using it in view uh, is it will change the color of all the instances and the materials um, uh, into that highlight color. And it's an easy way to be able to differentiate things uh, between each other. 
Uh, but it looks like that is a feature that is not going to be available uh, in Carbon Scatter at the moment. Uh, so that's another one of those leftover uh, features. Uh, so for now, you can just basically ignore that. Uh, and uh, just taking a look at uh, one last thing, uh, in case you're wondering what this button does up here, uh, this is the randomize button right next to the preview. Randomize will uh, add a seed to the vector of any function controls. Uh, so if you don't have any variable scaling or density or anything with a function loaded in, that's really not going to do much. Uh, but what we can do is randomize. In this case, we're changing the distribution uh, in the position. So you can populate and we'll see uh, a different option. So you can randomize the controls and if you take a look at what it actually does uh, is it adds if it doesn't have a vector 3 seed uh, it will add a vector 3 seed to the vector um, input from the position and then this number inside of that is modified every time you click randomize. So now it has a different uh, origin set up so it's just shifting the vector basically. Uh, as far as populating uh, other ecosystems, as you can see, once we click randomize, it doesn't change the internal noise used to control the initial uh, density and or scale uh, within that material. So that is something that's going to only modify um, anything controlled by a function. Uh, so the noise is anything that has a connection to the vector. Obviously, when we randomize images, uh, but we'll take a look uh, a little bit at all the different noises using fractals, mixing them, and uh, creating more interesting distributions of instances. Uh, earlier, I talked about uh, the range of altitude options uh, by object, by material, uh, and the absolute modes, and. Um, how the by object and by material were virtually the same because um, there were some problems uh, with uh, carbon scatter not really recognizing some of the options. Um, due to uh, a recent update, uh, it appears that that is now working properly. Um, so I do want to take the time and show you uh, some of the options. Um, also, uh, correct something about the absolute mode, uh, which um, doesn't entirely rely on the object axis depending on the mapping mode you're using. Uh, so uh, what I want to do is select uh, what I did was I took the landscape object I had before and I created a copy of it, uh, made a few changes uh, just modifying the seed and uh, the size of the object. Uh, so that way we've got two objects uh, and what we're going to do is select to populate on both objects. Uh, so I'm just going to create a quick ecosystem. Uh, just add a plant. Uh, just use the maple tree. Go ahead and populate it and take a look. Now if we go over to the presence um, and uh, select the by material mode and populate. Uh, if we move the slider up about halfway. Uh, now this isn't showing properly at the moment. That's going to be pretty equal to what happens with by object, which is going to take half of each object within uh, the ecosystem. Uh, so the slider represents each individual object, uh, where by material is going to take both of those into account in the total range. Now the by material and absolute modes uh, will basically require uh, a different mapping mode. So let's switch over to world standard and now if we go to by material what you can see is we have uh, the total range of the slider is the total range of all of the objects. So it's not just doing half of each object, it is going to be the full range. Uh, absolute mode is we're going to work the same way. Um, the object axis or the object axis average of the two objects is not going to uh, clip out the bottom when you're working with the world standard mode. Uh, like I was showing before, object parametric in the absolute mode uh, just doesn't work um, properly. So if we switch to world standard, now we can control 
based on actual units um, within the scene. So that is uh, incredibly helpful. Uh, now, if we go to the by object mode and populate and switch to the object parametric mode, you can see that the world uh, or object parametric is not going to have an impact. It is working correctly. Uh, so that is uh, something that is good to know. Uh, now, if you have created um, an ecosystem and you want to use the absolute mode, uh, but you've got functions running in the object parametric mode uh, for the mapping, uh, there is a way uh, to convert that. So let's go ahead and get a density function running. Uh, we'll just add in the chipped density. Double click, add it. Uh, and now if we switch over to the world standard mode, that is going to change um, the scale uh, that we have of the density. And if we take a look, it still says parametric on it. We'll click OK and see if we can refresh that. Uh, so just closed it, hit populate objects again, it has refreshed and now we can see it. Um, and the density changed. So if we want to switch this back uh, so that the function itself is running um, in the object parametric mapping mode, but that we can still use the absolute mode um, or uh, any of these other settings with the world standard, uh, there is a, a quick thing we can do. Uh, and depending on the function, um, if we take a look inside the function, we've got these links uh, to each of the nodes from the position, and this is the position vector. Now, when you start running more and more options, you're going to have more and more links um, to control, and that would technically need to be replaced um, because if, if we take a look, I'm going to select this position, and what we need to do is change it to a position options input node, which gives us the ability uh, to change to a different unit system for the position type uh, within the function that works separately from uh, the controls within the material editor. Um, once you select this top input, you can see we can't change it, uh, even though we should be able to. So, an easy way to, instead of having to replace every single link uh, and move it over, because you can have some pretty complex functions, a quick way is to go to the randomize uh, up at the top, click randomize, and it'll add that vector3 seed uh, and join everything together. So now within that link, uh, or what we can do is add in the input node position options, switch it over to object parametric, grab that uh, link and replace it and then um, because now we're not preserving with the vector seed what we can do is set it all to zero if you were working with a previous vector seed then you wouldn't have to worry about um, uh, adding the randomized because the seeds already there so then you could replace it uh, so now we have it set to the parametric or object parametric scale uh, but in the world standard mode. Uh, so that's a, a nice way to be able to switch things over. Uh, whether or not you want to delete the seed, you can see that once we do that, it's going to remove all those connections. Uh, so setting uh, just the offset to zero all the way across will prevent uh, the randomization. If you already have a vector seed, just preserve it and just switch over to the uh, position options input node. Uh, I also want to note, in case you uh, haven't noticed uh, yet after using Carbon Scatter, that if you go to the layer browser, um, once you create a Carbon Scatter uh, ecosystem, you do get a Carbon Scatter layer uh, that you can modify and uh, use the additional controls for, which is pretty nice. Um, to be able to manage uh, the instances a little bit easier.